Happy Friday. Semi-retired Rob here. I talk about the carnivore diet, all things related to the carnivore diet, and miscellaneous odds and ends. If you didn't read the description, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, both hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia this week. But first, let me know in the comments if you can hear me. I see Rick has shown up with his quack quack. Hello, Rick. I'm glad you're here. We're going to have to get together again sometime real soon and do something together, Rick. It's been a while since we've chatted. While we wait for other people to come in, I'll cover the, the easier side of this, the hyperglycemia, the elevated blood sugar. Elevated blood sugar can be counteracted quite easily. Just stop pouring carbs down your neck. There is no need for exogenous carbohydrates, which means carbohydrates that you consume. The slightly more difficult, but not quite as much. What prompted this discussion is during the, uh, I don't remember if it was on one of my videos or the live stream that I did with Dave just a couple of nights ago. But there was a question that I didn't get to about how does carnivore affect hypoglycemia, which means low blood sugar. And we're going to talk about that here in just a little bit. We've got uh, Midrab. Hello. I'm glad you're here. Patricia is here, and she can hear me great. There are carbohydrates, yes, a very little bit. And depending on the cheese and the yogurt that you get, I mean, there's a little bit of carbohydrate in eggs, and there's a little bit of carbohydrate in, in meat. But that's not nearly as much as, you know, I was watching, I'm trying to remember who it was. Um, oh, it was Dr. Gary Fetke. And he was talking about how he had gotten the exact amount of sugar that becomes poisonous to our system. And he said the bloodstream, on average, an average person will have about a teaspoon of sugar floating in their bloodstream. And about a half a teaspoon most people can deal with without bad effects. It doesn't really become poisonous until you start consuming too much of it. But if we consider that we can say, oh, we're doing, I'm doing real well on my low carb. I've just, can, you know, I'm just having bacon and eggs in the morning and just one piece of toast instead of two or three pieces of toast. Well, that one piece of toast, depending on the bread type, of course, can have anywhere from five to ten teaspoons of sugar in it. So that one piece of toast is way more than you need. So that's something to keep in mind while you're having your, as Rick says, cheese and yogurt and things like that. It, we still have to be very careful with that kind of stuff. And... Sakya is here from Phoenix, Arizona. Hello. And Kismet, the Pharaoh Grandma, has arrived. Hello, young lady. How are you today? I never run out of energy despite eating nothing meat on many days. Yeah, I never run out of energy either. Meat and eggs. I knew that what you meant. And Bert is here. Hello, Bert. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. Let's see here. Aged cheeses have less carbs. Yes, but most cheeses do still have some carb in them. For those of you that haven't been here before, the reason I'm looking this way instead of straight into the camera is that my bigger monitor is over here, and I can read the comments better on my bigger monitor rather than on the tiny laptop screen. I have people tell me just one treat won't hurt. For me, it does. I can't stop at one. Yeah, I mean, there was even a very popular commercial that implemented that. I bet you can't eat just one. I'm sure most of us remember those Lay's commercials. There's a reason. Carbs are addicting, and they're not 
addicting by themselves just because, well, yes, they are. But the sugar that you get from eating the high carbohydrate foods hits the dopamine center of the brain and that makes the experience pleasurable and that's why they are addicting. Rick says, had a treat today, heart attack shrimp. Oh, that sounds really good. For those of you that don't know what heart attack insert meat here is, in Rick's kitchen, he has a big pot of lard, I believe it is, but any kind of fat will do, whether it's lard or ghee or tallow. Um, you could probably even use coconut oil, except that'll taste like coconut. The coconut oil is like 98, 99% saturated fat, so it should work about the same if you're doing coconut oil. Um, but he has a big pot of fat that he gets up to temperature and then just throws the meat in there, whether it be heart attack shrimp or heart attack chicken. It's all, or heart attack iguana. It's all just, he doesn't do anything with breading or anything. He just throws the meat into the grease and lets it fry up. And when I would see a Lay's bag, I always say, yes, I won't eat any. Okay, since I'm caught up on the comments. Oh, not quite. Yeah, that is the same comment. Okay, let's go ahead. And because the question I had was hypoglycemia, it says, can carnivore help with fat? The short, simple answer is yes. Yes, it will. But the science behind it needs a little bit of explaining. We all know Bob gets in trouble when he tries to do science. But as I understand it from watching, because um, I've watched some doctors about this topic recently to try and cover this question, the effects, it's not the actual level of your low blood sugar, it's a big drop in your blood sugar that causes the hypoglycemic incidence. So, you know, if you take in a big pile of sugar and your body overreacts, it puts out too much insulin, which can happen, that will lower your blood sugar too far too fast. And it's that drop that creates the problem. Um, there are many carnivores that keep a regular normal baseline blood sugar of in the high 70s and low 80s, and many people would consider that to be low blood sugar, but it's not. The way to tell if you're having a low blood sugar incident is if you ha are having symptoms. I don't remember, I couldn't find this video that I remember watching about six months ago, but there was a, an experiment with extreme ketosis. They had, you know, they were feeding people a highly ketogenic diet. And then the doctor did the experiment to see how well the, he was doing this experiment to see how well the brains would run on ketones. And at the end, at the this thing they were sitting in a room i guess talking and he gave them all an insulin injection which dropped their blood sugar into the 45 to 50 range across the group i believe it was just six people um and you would expect with their blood sugar getting that low that they would you know get dizzy maybe even pass out all of the, the problems that can happen with blo low blood sugar. But none of that happened. They were sitting up, talking, having a good time, not even really realizing that their blood sugar was that low. So when it comes to hypoglycemia, if you're, it's the big drop that gets you. If you're normally running at what would be considered a low rate, but you don't have any symptoms, then you're perfectly fine. The one thing I would suggest, especially to those of you that are still taking some diabetes medicine, or you're still eating some carbs, and that could be why you're getting these hypoglycemic episodes, 
if you run into those, as you well know, the best way to do that is to drink some orange juice or eat a half a candy bar or some other high sugar thing to bring your blood sugar back up rapidly. Um, so if you're having problems with that, you might keep some of that around the house just in case. I don't think after several months of carnivore that you will have those episodes because once you've established a lower baseline of blood glucose, your body will adapt to that. And if you're not giving it the big spikes, the peaks and the valleys, you shouldn't ever have any problem with that again. That's what I was able to find. And I hope whoever asked that question has watched this little bit of the live stream to get that answer because I think it's important information. And it looks like John Boston has shown up. Hello, John. Yes, everything's going very well here. It. I meant to get out for a walk yesterday because it was really nice out, and I did go for a short walk, but I just wasn't feeling it because I'm still in the recovery phase from the long trip and the sore joints and then tweaking my knee in dance class on Tuesday. I just decided that a day of basically rest yesterday was in order. However, it is... Um, about 55 degrees and sunny out today. So as soon as this live stream is over, I'm going to go out for a walk and probably record tomorrow's video as well. So that's that's how I'm doing. I hope everybody else is doing well. Let's go ahead and change that banner. You all know I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice by this time, right? Okay. Brenda is here. Hello from Chicago. I spent a lot of time in Chicago unwillingly on my vacation recently, both on the way to Ohio and on the way back. For someone who doesn't have health problems, doing carnivore for weight loss and improved health, do you think testing for ketones is useful? No, I don't think testing for ketones is useful for anything unless you're doing an actual, you know, experiment of some sort just to see what you can get your ketone levels to for whatever reason. I don't, I've never checked anything. I don't worry about that. I, I just don't test. I don't eat any carbs. Therefore, I know I'm in ketosis. It's really quite simple. Now, there, if you're a numbers person, there are quite a few of them out there. They love to, you know, they stick their finger and check their blood sugar and they stick their finger and check their ketones or they pee on a stick and check their ketones. They check lots and lots of stuff because they're numbers oriented. And if they can see a number move by a 0 0.01, that gets those people excited. And if you're one of those people, then by all means, go right ahead. I don't think there's anything inherently useful about that unless you're one of these numbers people. So the easy answer to the question is no. Thanks. That was my plan not to test you. Yeah, I've never tested anything. Now due to the my history of high blood pressure for the longest time I have tested my blood pressure every morning. I've kind of let that fall by the wayside. I haven't done it in the last three or four days um, because I haven't changed anything in my diet. There's no reason to suspect that my blood pressure has gone out of whack. I will definitely still test it from time to time, just like I occasionally test my blood glucose from time to time. But the last handful of times I've tested my blood glucose, it was right where I expected it to be. So... I don't see the need to put myself through the finger sticks and that kind of stuff either. Let me. <clears throat> ah. <clears throat> I like water. <clears throat> That's all I've had today. This is the fifth, so it's day five of no coffee. 
everything seems to be pretty much back to normal. I had a little bit of a struggle the first and second day, but now it's just like, mm, whatever. I did notice yesterday I ate a little bit more than I usually do. Oh, excuse me. I don't mean to yawn in your faces. <clears throat> I talked about not having coffee, and I immediately, immediately yawn. How's that for fun? When you started talking about ketones, I was worried you were going to do a whole month on sardines to see how your ketones were. Um, no, there is no danger of me doing a whole month on sardines. If I really wanted to do a how far into ketosis can I get? Oh, excuse me. One yawn brings others. Maybe, I, you know. Maybe there are still some effects from not having coffee. But if I were going to do a, a you know, see how far into ketosis I can get, I would up my fat way up. I still have several packages of just beef fat trimmings in the freezer. I would cook one of those up with a hamburger and have a much higher fat meal several days in a row. I'd probably even eat some some butter with it just to see what happens. But I don't worry about it. I mean, my health is improving every day. My comp body composition is improving every day. Um, the one thing that I've always said on this channel, if what you're doing is working, there's no need to change. All these little tweaks and hacks and things that people talk about, all of those are about 1% to 5% problems. The final 1% to 5%, you're trying to get rid of those last 1% last of your weight, or you still got just a little tick in a joint and you want to get rid of that, or whatever it is. Most of what people are talking about, I consider 1% to 5% problems. Because, as I've said many times on this channel, just eat the meat, add the salt, drink the water. That will get you 90 to 95% of where you want to be. <clears throat> I tried sardines. Not for me. Yeah, I, we haven't seen Craig in a few weeks. I wonder what he's up to. Can I be excised for numbering something about the EMT training I had? Um, yeah, no, no. If you're a numbers person and you like checking all the numbers to see how you think you're doing, then by all means, continue to check all the numbers. If that's what helps you get up in the morning, that's what you should do. Bob, I think it's time for some coffee. When I drink coffee, I feel more cravings. Uh, now, see, that's just the other, the flip side for me. When I drink coffee, apparently I don't get as hungry because it's not like I was hugely hungry yesterday, but I did find myself snacking on some boiled eggs when I don't normally snack. So it was, uh, it's interesting. You know, this, that's part of why I'm doing this 60-day no coffee experiment, just to see what kinds of things may or may not crop up as I unaddict myself to caffeine and see what happens. You know, it may be just like the other two times I've done this for 30 days where pretty much nothing happens and I go back to drinking coffee because I didn't really notice any difference. Um, now, I may have, I think I noticed the big difference on the first day of no coffee because I'd been on vacation. And the final 35-hour trip home on a bus ride, because I don't sleep on buses, um, I had a lot of coffee to get me through that 35 hours. And that may be why I encountered more of a, more of a drag down on the first day of no coffee than I did the previous two runs. 
take your A. Mm, don't know what that means, but hello, Brenda. I'm glad you're here. And don't forget, get get those questions and comments in. I'm willing to talk about whatever it is you want to talk about. Um, brief recap of what we talked about earlier. You know, getting rid of high blood glucose is easy. Oh. Take your sardine wrap. Wrap E. Still don't know. I'm not a fan of sardines. I've never been a fan of sardines. And I believe Keith has joined us in that camp, and I'm okay with that too. But, uh, yes, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. That really helps. If you're commenting, you yeah. know, Wrap them in bacon. Bake for 20 minutes. Um, I'll just bake the bacon and eat that. I, I, I'm, I've tried sardines. I don't like them. And no matter how you dress them up, they're still sardines. I appreciate the, the suggestion. And if somebody out there really, really wants to get sardines into their system, that might be a way to do it. Uh, me personally... I, I don't feel the need to have sardines. I know there are quite a few people that advocate for having some sardines now and then, but as you know, or might know if you have been watching my channel for a while, just in case, as a sort of a, I don't really feel the need to, but as a just in case sort of thing, about once a week or once every other week, I will open up a can of salmon or a can of tuna and mix that in with my ground beef. Um, if you're eating roasts and steaks and things like that, I don't think that's necessary because you can tell by looking at the piece of meat if it's a quality piece of meat or not. With ground beef, sometimes the source of the ground beef can be questionable. That's why I add either a can of tuna or a can of salmon to it just to kind of up the omega-3 content. I know sardines are supposed to be very, very good for you. But one of the cardinal rules that I put forth for carnivore diet, there are so many foods that we like. Why eat something you dislike because yeah it may be good for you but there's a lot of things that are good for you just eating a steak is very good for you eating half a dozen to a dozen eggs is very good for you eat what you enjoy eating and it will be much easier to stick to your plan rather than you know if you're constantly trying to force things that you don't like or don't care for or don't enjoy eating down your face, you're going to have problems, in my opinion. Let's see here. Drinking fat coffee with gum-free heavy whipping cream is my go-to instead of cravings, instead of snacks, that is. Yeah. And that's perfectly fine. You know, whatever your go-to is, for me, it's usually just a pinch of salt and a drink of water or an electrolyte water. And if that doesn't knock down the craving, excuse me. If that doesn't knock down the craving, then I go for a walk. Do 10, 15 minutes of exercise, whatever. I do something to distract myself. And those two things would usually knock it out. But at the end of that, if I'm still feeling like I want something, I go ahead and eat. Because let's not forget, I mean, we talk a lot about fasting and intermittent fasting. And, you know, there's still a lot of people out there that talk about how you can eat too much. Well, if you think back, it's been about a year and a half ago now when Dr. Barry, it might even be two years, Dr. Barry did his first beef, butter, bacon, and eggs challenge. And Joe from Two Crazy Ketos 
because Dr. Barry had said, I believe it's impossible to gain weight eating just beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Joe from Two Crazy Ketos took that as a personal challenge and he ate as much as he could stuff into his face for an entire 30 days because he was trying to prove Dr. Barry wrong because he's, you know, at that time he was convinced that it is still possible to overeat. And is it? I, I don't know. But I do know that the experiment, N equals one experiment that Joe did at Two Crazy Ketos is in an attempt to eat enough beef, butter, bacon, and eggs to gain some weight to prove Dr. Barry wrong, he lost about three pounds. So take that for what you will. That's uh, So if you're hungry, if you the little tricks that you come up with to get past a, a craving don't work, and you still feel like, I got to put something in my mouth, go ahead. As long as it's beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Or pork, any carnivore food, really. Um, I, I use eggs as my go-to. Or if I happen to have some leftover ground beef that I didn't finish that's in the fridge, I will sometimes eat that. Oh, excuse me, I have to yawn again. Oh, hmm. But that's that's where we're at for not you know you, you for cravings and stuff, whatever your go-to is, as long as it's carnivore, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think it can bother you. And I don't think you'll gain weight. Hello, G. I'm glad you're here as well. Welcome to the live stream. Well, we're about halfway through here, and the, the comments have really slowed down. Um, so feel free to say hi, Bob. Drop over in the comments and put a question, or even some, even if it's not a question, just some topic you'd like me to discuss today. I'm happy to do that as well, because it didn't take me very long. And none of the topics that I talk about ever really take a long time to talk about, you know, the if you have high blood sugar, just stop dumping sugar into your system. If you have low blood sugar, just stop dumping sugar into your system. It is still the, it's the drop that causes the hypoglycemic incidence. And if you're not having the huge peaks and valleys, you should never actually have symptoms. Now, if you do, for whatever reason, get symptoms of hypoglycemia, go ahead and have a few sips of orange juice or a half a candy bar or whatever other sugar thing you have around the house to bring that blood sugar back up. But be very careful with that. You shouldn't need to do that very often. And after you've been carnivore for, you know, 90 to 180 days, you probably shouldn't have to do that at all. If you're still having what you consider to be the symptoms of a hypoglycemic episode and you've been carnivore for six months and you know you're not cheating, you're not giving yourself the peaks and the valleys, then I would go see your doctor to see what possibly else could be going on. Uh, Bob... Caffeine deficiency, never seen you long, long. It could be. It could be. I'm only on day five of no coffee. Um, I don't know. I actually didn't start yawning until I talked about not having coffee. So it could just be psychological. Uh, let's see here. Have you noticed that your YouTube uploads have been slow lately? Um, what are, you, are you talking about the actual upload speed to YouTube? Um, if that's what you're talking about, no, because I have gigabit internet here at the house. Now, I do know because I use a VPN, 
if I forget to shut off the VPN before uploading to YouTube, um, it can take two to three minutes to upload a 20 minute video. If I have, if I remember to shut off my VPN before I start uploading to YouTube, and it doesn't have to buffer through the VPN and all that, I can upload a 20 minute video to YouTube and between 45 seconds and a minute and a half because I have really fast internet here. If you're talking about something different, let me know, Rick. Will you be making videos as you build your new home set? Oh, yes. I'm still going to try and get... Come on, camera, focus. Focus. There we go. I'm still planning on doing daily videos or most days when I get down there. We'll see how it goes. Um, the main thing I have to work out is my internet connection. And that's one of the first things on the agenda. Of course, the first thing on the agenda is to check the GPS coordinates of the four corners of my land, make sure I've got it, and I have to go into the post office and the county records office and actually get an address assigned to this. Now, there, I'm never going to get mail service out there, but, you know, I'll have to get a post office box in Van Horn. But you need an actual physical address so that when I order like from Lowe's or Home Depot or whoever, you know, $3,000 worth of building supplies and have it delivered, you can't just give them GPS coordinates. You have to give them a physical address. Now, they may not be able to find that physical address and you may still have to give the driver GPS coordinates, but to actually process an order, you have to have a physical address. And I want to get the land survey just to make sure if it hasn't already been done. I think it actually has already been done. And the four corners are already staked out. I just have to make sure those those markers are visible. And But yes, I am planning on doing as many uploads as I can from down there. But once I get situated where I know I'm for sure on the right spot and have all the other stuff worked out, I have to work out internet. It looks like I'm right on the line, so I should be able to use T-Mobile home internet because um, it's right between the line of 5G and extended 5G. And if it turns out that doesn't work out, I will have to bite the bullet and probably go with Starlink. I'd rather not go to Starlink because that's an extra $100 a month over top of what the T-Mobile thing charges. So if the, T, if the T-Mobile home internet box will work on my property, that's what I'm going to go with, even if the speeds are a little slower because I am still trying to do this as cheaply as possible. And if I have to spend $150 a month on internet because I have to go Starlink, I'll have to figure out what to cut out of my budget to make that work. Unless I can get everybody in the, that watches my videos to join my channel memberships, and then I'll have a little extra money to do that with. But I will get it worked out. It's just a matter of getting the getting the internet set up. And once I get that all figured out, then I'll be back to having videos as often as I possibly can. Huh. I'm sorry that's happening to you, Rick. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if that's on YouTube's end, though. Um, like I said, I haven't had any trouble with it. You might ask some of the other people that upload videos and see if they've had trouble. It may be something interrupting in your cable system. Because I haven't had any trouble. Let's see here. I tried MCT oil and coffee and have to say that really curbed hunger. I don't know how Bob quit coffee cold turkey. He's our hero. Um... I quit coffee cold turkey because I said I was going to. It's just that simple. 
Uh, I use a tablespoon tablespoonful of Kerrygold butter. Yeah, and I've been adding a little bit of butter to my hot water drink. Not every morning. I did that yesterday morning, but not today. Primarily, I've been just having my uh, my collagen active, which is part of the Cerule product line, but it's the it's the collagen drink that they make. And I won't say it's tasty. I won't say it's bad. It's one of those, when we were kids, if anybody's my age or a little older, when we were kids and our mom made up a pitcher of Kool-Aid, which was invented here in Nebraska, by the way, if you didn't know that, um, it's, it's like the flavor of Kool-Aid that we didn't really like. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. But it's the flavor of Kool-Aid we had because that's the flavor mom had in the drawer or she got on sale. So that's the flavor. That's sort of what this drink reminds me of. Like I said, it's not bad, but it's not good either. It's just kind of there. But I will... Besides mixing it up in hot water, I'll mix in an electrolyte packet or I'll put a little pat of butter in it. Um, or sometimes I'll just put salt in it as well just to get as much of my stuff into my system in the morning as I can. And Keith is here. Hello, Keith. I'm glad you're here. There's one of my channel members. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day out there. And John has arrived. Hello, John. I'm glad you're here. Welcome home from work. I hope it was a good day at work, and now you're ready to start your weekend. Yeah, Kerry Gold is great. I do have low-carb veggie once in a while and like to add butter to it. Yeah, and I I really like Kerry Gold butter. If it wasn't so doggone expensive. And the butter I use that it's odd if you look at the you know many of the cheap butters have other stuff in them but the great value which is walmart's own brand just cheap butter that is <clears throat> about a quarter of the cost of Kerrygold, just has one ingredient cream and if it's salted then it has salt in it as well it's very clean and it's dirt cheap. Is it as good as Kerrygold? <clears throat> Not by a long shot. But Kerrygold can be really, really expensive. And I'm trying to keep basically to under $5 a day for food. Because if I keep it under $5 a day, that's 30 times 5 is 30, 60, 90, 120. That's like, you know, 150. That's $150 a month for food which is very affordable and allows me to save more money for building this chunk of land behind me. I'm taking a lot of water breaks today, too. I must be a little dry or something. Dehydrated from lack of coffee. Here. It was a very good day at work, and I'm definitely ready to start my weekend. Yes, I've tried the Aldi butter and the stuff that was clean. That was really good. I just, I don't get over to Aldi as often as I'd like. Aldi, I think, brand labels Irish butter, but not sure if it's Kerrygold. Um, I'll have to look at that. I haven't, I haven't spent a lot of time exploring in Aldi's because normally when I go to Aldi's, I'm just going there for ground beef. And I, you know, I come in the front door, walk straight back. I don't even do the, the quarter for the cart thing. I just carry it out on my arm. I walk in. I go straight back to where they keep the ground beef. Um, they usually come in five pound, on five pound trays. And depending on how much I need, I'll usually grab two or three of those, occasionally four, and just carry them up to the front. And that's what I do. I just 
I know where all these keeps the ground beef. I go in there, I get it, I get back out because I'm not a huge fan of shopping. No, not really. I am I think there's still a link for the hydro cell down there, but that promotion is long over. I just bought this because I was promoting hydro cell at one point. And it's one of the few things I had to drink water out of that's not plastic, since I've been convinced that drinking out of plastic is probably not the best thing for us due to microplastics. Now, are microplastics as big of a problem as some people think? In general, yes, but in use here at the house, you know, as if you've got plastic drinking cups, as long as you never let them get warm, they should be fine. You know, and I, if I do grab a glass of water out of the sink, I let it run cold for a minute. I rinse the glass out once with cold water, and I think that helps cool the plastic back down. Then I fill it up when I drink it, and that's the way I do things. I don't, uh, I don't worry as much about that. But this is one of the few non-plastic drinking containers I have in the house. Over the course of time, I hope to get more, but uh, more costs money. And I'm not spending any extra money right now. Aldi has ground beef for two thirty nine dollars a pound this week. I may have to go check that out. Um, so it's eleven ninety five for the five pound tube, which makes it about the same price as the stuff I get from Walmart because their ten pound tubes are normally about. $24.99. And that, that is a little cheaper. And I think the Aldi ground beef is a little bit better ground beef. Um, so we'll see. Uh, on my Walmart order today, they said limit three on the ground beef I've been buying. At. Anyone else see any limits? I have not seen any limits on anything. But, uh, you know, perhaps Walmart's having a sale. I don't, I don't know what the current sale prices are. Um, I have food enough in the freezer to get me through till next Wednesday easily, which is payday for me. So next Wednesday, I'll, I'll get paid and I'll go stock up for the month. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I actually, I did have something different for Easter. Well, I actually had the roast the day before Easter. I had just eggs on Easter, but I did buy one roast this last cycle, and I ate that the day before Easter. It was really good. It was a nice change up from just ground beef and eggs. But I'm right back into it on ground beef and eggs because it's not that I mind ground beef and eggs. It's just nice to change once in a while. Yep, Aldi fresh 73% lean ground beef, which is the 73.27, which is just what the, the cheap stuff is at Walmart. 239 the pound available all quantities last valid for three to four nine. Which means it's this week's sale. Yeah, so I'll, maybe I'll get over there Monday morning. Will that be soon enough? Let's see here. Yeah, because the ninth is Tuesday. Maybe I'll get over to all these on Monday morning. Um, I bought a little circuit breaker thing for my truck. Um, because even after all that work, I still had problems with, like when I got home from vacation, the battery was completely dead. What was that? Okay. The battery on my truck was completely dead again. Um, but because I didn't go anywhere the week before I went on vacation. I had friends take me and come back. My truck had not been started in almost a month. I put the battery charger on it for three hours, let it sit there. And I don't think there's anything mechanically wrong with the truck because when I went to fire it up after sitting in my driveway in Omaha, Nebraska for almost a whole month, 
it fired off on the first crank once I got the battery charged. And I could tell the battery was completely dead because when I opened the door, the dome light didn't even come on. So I bought one of those bar. It's basically you hook it onto the negative battery terminal and then you hook the, the negative wire connector to the other side of it. And it's just got this lift up bar. So if I'm going to be gone for more than a couple of weeks, rather than trying to track down the short and spend all the time and energy and effort to maybe find the short, maybe not find whatever the drain is, I've now just got a disconnect on my battery so that if I know I'm going to be parked for a couple, three weeks, primarily like when I get down to Texas, I don't expect to have to go to town more than once or twice a month. I'm just going to flip the, the battery cutoff and leave it at that. I'm not going to worry about trying to find what the what the big problem is, because I don't think it's a big problem. I think there's just some little electric something or other in that truck that is causing a drain. And it would take a lot more skill than I have to find it. So I'm just going to install this thing in the battery and call it done. And I believe we have come to the end of our questions and comments yet again. So since I talked about it, a little bit already. I'm not going to belabor the point, but we do have to spend just a few, oops, we do have to spend just a few moments talking about Cerule because I believe in the product. You know, as Professor K tells us, stem cells in our body are what help rejuvenate and repair our body. That happens in everybody. After the age of 18, our production starts to slowly go down. The flagship product, Stem Enhance Ultra, can return your stem cell production to previous levels so that you get more of the goodness that your own adult stem cells give you. The reason why... I chose the Cerule products versus all of the other ones that are out there, is that there's quite a bit of research. And if you go to their website, you can read the research for yourself. There's a link in the description. It's right there scrolling on the screen, semiretiredbob.cerule.com. And if you go there, on the top of the page, in one of the drop-down menus, it'll there's it's like read the science or see the science or something like that. And there are several articles and scientific journal type things that tell you that the Cerule product, Stem Enhance Ultra, does exactly what it says it does. And the thing that and the thing that uh, got me on them was that most of those studies that they have up there were people doing research trying to prove that Cerule didn't do what they said it did. Yet, they could only conclude that, yes, it really does do what they say it does. And if you're one of these people that you don't like eating the, the gristly part of the roast or the gristly part of the chicken or the little film that comes on the inside of an eggshell, which is all collagen, by the way, and collagen is really important, Cerule does have a collagen product that... I feel fantastic on it. So take that for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, if you want to check it out, check it out. If you don't, that's okay too. As always, if you have any questions or comments, <clears throat> you can reach me at my email of semiretiredbob at yahoo.com. If you would like to have a sit down and tell your story or just chat about whatever, it doesn't even have to be that you have some great story. You just want to sit down and chat about something that you think will be interesting enough for me to put on my channel as a video. Send me an email. I'm happy to record you. Uh, you know, unless you're going to try and do pole dancing or something, I'm not going to put that on my channel. But if you just want to sit down and have a discussion about something, I'm happy to do that. 
Quinn Brook Acres is here. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for stopping by. Well, we do have just a few minutes left. If anybody wants to, to leave any other comments or has any other questions or anything like that. And Aldi is more expensive. Yes, Aldi's does vary from spot to spot. And DS111, I agree with you. I actually prefer all these ground beef to Walmart's ground beef, as long as we're, you know, comparing apples to apples rather than apples to oranges. As long as we're talking about the 7327, the cheap ground beef that they sell, I do prefer all these to Walmart. It tastes better. It cooks up better. I just, and it seems to have just a little bit less grease come off of it. However, normally here in Omaha, I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, like right now Aldi's has a sale, but normally the Walmart ground ground beef is cheaper than the Aldi's. So that's why I add either a can of tuna or a can of salmon once a week or so to my big bowl of ground beef because I buy whatever meat is the cheapest, and you never know what you're getting in there. A lot of times, the cheap ground beef actually has some organ meats and stuff in it because they can't sell them to anybody else, so they just throw all that stuff in the grinder. So you're never quite sure what you're getting. But unless you're raising your own food, as in keeping cows and sheep and pigs and goats and chickens in your backyard, you don't really know anyway. So, and I don't seem to be suffering any ill effects except the yawning that I've had a problem with today. <clears throat> I don't think I'm having any problems with the cheap ground beef. So, you can take that for what it's worth. Yeah, that's the one we're talking about here. Just threw a 16-ounce ribeye in the air fryer for dinner. Good for you, John. Bob, I'm going to get some at Aldi right now and cook some up. I will email you and let you know how it was. Excellent. Thanks. I appreciate that. Aldi's ground lamb is also... I wouldn't know about that because ground lamb is kind of expensive. Um, I believe GFS is a grocery store that they have down there in Florida. And Rick says that's the cheapest around here right now. Yeah, and even all these varies. Walmarts vary from area to area. Because one of the things I noticed, you know, when I when I'm buying here in Omaha, ground beef and the occasional tray of Stew meat are usually the two cheapest things I can get at Walmart. Whereas when I got down to North Carolina last year, <clears throat> I went to get some stew meat and it was ridiculously expensive. But the roasts, their cheap chuck roasts, were a little bit cheaper. So it just pays to have two or three stores in your rotation and check the prices. Like I, I keep track. Uh, it's actually a Kroger affiliate now. We have a, a store out here called Baker's. And I don't like them as well as when they were Baker's. But Baker, Mr. Baker passed away several years ago and the store chain got sold to Kroger's. Um so I still get a bake a baker's flyer. So I check the prices there. Um, I check Aldi. There's a place out here called Fairway. That's a local chain that's based out of Des Moines, Iowa, I believe it is. Um, and they have really good meats. And I I keep checking for theirs because when they have ground beef on sale, that's the best place to buy it, and it's the best quality because they make it right there in store. It's called Fairway Zone, and it's an 80-20 mix that they have mixed up themselves in the back room and put together. 
but when they put it on sale, you have to buy it in 10 pound chubs. They won't to get the cheapest price. If you win and want individually wrapped pounds, they charge you more. But if you just buy one of the pre wrapped 10 pound chubs they have, or in my case, when it's on sale, buy three or four of the pre wrapped 10 pound chubs, you get a much better price on it. Yeah, and it just it depends on where you're getting it. I know they they throw some of that stuff in at Fairway. It's a very small amount, so it's not like you're going to be able to taste it. In fact, their ground beef tastes very good. Um, but yeah, and then he's mentioning uh, Save a Lot here in Indiana. They have good sales on meat. Yes, indeed. And maybe sometime have a talk about good carnivore foods for emergency supply. Yep, we can do that. <clears throat> Knowing how to grow your own meat is the best way to do it. Knowing how to buy meat and then salt cure it is another good thing to do. Um, and in my case, as you all know, I love Spam. I still have five, six cases of Spam out in the garage. Um, is it the best food in the world? No, but it falls in that bronze metal food category with all the other processed stuff, you know, spam, potted meat, Vienna sausages, all that kind of stuff. Buy it, put it on the shelf. It basically lasts forever. It has an expiration date on it, but as long as the can doesn't get damaged, it should be fine. And while there is a little bit of carbon spam and there's a little bit of carbon potted meat, there's a lot less bad things in a can of spam as opposed to one of these uncle, well, I don't want to say the name, but, you know, one of these rice meals that comes all in the pouch that all you have to do is throw it in the microwave for 30 seconds and you've got a hot rice dish. I'd much rather see you eat, you know, have a long-term supply of spam than a long-term supply of rice and beans. Although as an emergency food supply, rice and beans are still, I mean, it's not good for you on the grand scale of things. But if it comes down to survival, I, I won't deny the fact that I do have out in my emergency food kit in the garage it's all sealed up so mics can't get at it but i do have a 25 pound bag of rice and a 25 pound bag of beans out there in the garage too i at this point in time i don't ever plan on actually using them but emergencies happen let's see here had t-bones for 4.99 a pound this week that's a good price on t-bones um, make friends with butchers and processing shops. Now and then some will have something processed and then not pay for it. And usually the shop will sell at a discount to get rid of it. Yes, indeed. They will do that. And I know the main thing I watch for at the, I don't remember the name of the grocery store. It's the other grocery store in my rotation where I get my uh, fat e-fat trimmings. Usually it happens most often when they get you know, when they're selling the whole rib roasts or some kind of big roast that you can cut up into prime ribs or T-bones or something for yourself, those usually come in with a lot of extra fat on them. And if I know they've got those going on sale, I know they'll be having a bunch of them coming in. And that's when I go over and say, hey, could you save me? 15 or 20 pounds of the fat trimmings that you're just going to throw away anyway. And they always say, yep, sure thing. And they tray it up for me, wrap it up, and I take it home, throw it in the freezer so that I always have some beef fat trimmings on hand if I need them. Rice is a meal for ducks, not humans. Yes, indeed it is. 99.9% .9 of the time, Rick, but in a true grid down situation, it's good to have a little slave food backup in case, well, 
we don't have to go that far. <clears throat> we don't have to go that far back in history, just a couple of years, to find a time when grocery stores had nothing to buy because the supply chain got interrupted. So that's why I keep a big bag of rice and a big bag of beans out there. I'm not ever planning on using them, but it's nice to know it's out there just in case. I bought an elk for $3 per pound last year that way. Yep, yeah, see, there you go, Keith. I need to go to Aldi now, but I'm not working today. I guess I'll use the bike. There you go. And Dustin is here just in time for me to say goodbye because it is just a little bit after the hour here. So we are done for today. Thanks for stopping by, Dustin. But I want to thank each and every one of you for being here with me today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments. I hope you enjoyed this just a little bit anyway. Don't forget, get out there, be 1% better. Today, tomorrow, every day. Have a great day, folks. I'll see you in the next one.